Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video we'll be talking through the differential diagnoses of white oral lesions. These are usually caused by a thickened keratin layer, so we'll break down the types of white patches that can be seen in the mouth using the acronym COIN to help us remember them. So C stands for congenital, O stands for other, for example a white patch caused by a burn or friction, I for inflammatory or infection, and N for neoplastic or possibly pre-neoplastic causes. Let's start with the most common group you'll see in the mouth, which are the inflammatory type. These can be further broken down into infective or non-infective types. For example, candida can give white lesions, as can hairy leukoplakia, which is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, also known as human herpes virus 4. This tends to occur on the lateral border of the tongue. Also, human papillomavirus infections, which can cause warts and papillomas. A syphilitic patch can also be a cause for an infective white legion, and this condition is caused by the Treponema pallidum bacteria. Examples of non-infective inflammatory white legions include lichen planus. This can present as white striae or white patches in any oral site, and it affects up to 2% of the adult population. Also, lupus erythematosus, which is an autoimmune condition that can present with oral lesions that resemble lichen planus. The most striking sign of lupus is a butterfly rash across the cheeks and bridge of nose. In the other category, a burn can cause a white patch. For example, an aspirin burn, which can also give erythema and ulceration. It happens when some patients attempt to treat an area of oral discomfort or toothache by applying aspirin directly onto the affected site. You might also see this under a full denture. Frictional keratosis, which happens due to chronic irritation of the oral mucosa, is caused particularly by friction from the teeth and seen mainly at the occlusal line in the buccal mucosa, especially in adult females. It's also commonly seen on the lateral borders of the tongue. Or in patients with missing teeth, you may see keratosis on the alveolar ridge related to trauma when eating. A skin graft can appear as a white wrinkled area in the mouth, and it's typically used after excision of large areas of malignancy or dysplasia. And finally, scars, which can also present as white patches in the mouth. Moving on to the congenital causes, a few conditions to note. We have white sponge nevus. It's a benign condition characterised by thickened, folded white patches, most commonly affecting the buccal mucosa, and is due to mutations in the genes coding for keratin 4 and 13 proteins. Dyskeratosis congenita, which is an inherited syndrome in which patients undergo premature ageing, and are predisposed to malignancy. In the mouth, patients may suffer from mucosal erosions and white patches which can be potentially malignant. Leukoedema is a common benign white or whitish grey lesion seen especially in the buccal mucosa bilaterally in people of African or Asian descent. The white appearance disappears if the mucosa is stretched, the cause is unknown and no treatment is required. Lastly, we have four dice spots, which are a normal harmless finding. They're essentially a collection of sebaceous glands within the oral cavity that present a small, slightly raised, smooth, yellow, white spot on the vermilion border of the lips and the oral mucosa. The last group we'll discuss are the neoplastic or pre-neoplastic causes for white patches. Leukoplakia is an example, and this is a white patch that cannot be rubbed off and cannot be identified clinically as any specific disease. Most cases are associated with a tobacco habit, and it is potentially a malignant lesion, so it's crucial to biopsy any white patch with an uncertain cause. Next we have squamous cell carcinoma, which can present as a white patch at any intraoral site, but the tongue, floor of the mouth, 
and the retromolar region are the most common areas involved. Tobacco and alcohol are the two most important risk factors for its development. And finally, submucous fibrosis, which is a pre-malignant condition caused by betel nut chewing and mainly affects patients from Southeast Asia or India. It's characterised by the development of fibrous tissue in the buccal mucosa and palate, which can cause whitening of the mucosa and restricted mouth opening. That's everything for this video today. Thanks for watching.